hi friends uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, first web service example using access one implementation in eclipse here so as we discussed in previous video this access one implementation is belongs to the jax rpc specification here so now i want to develop very simple web services now i want to develop very simple web services now let us see i want to develop one service class called cal service dot java here cal service dot java here inside this we want to use one method called we want to declare one method called public int method name is add int i comma into j here into j so just inside this i want to use like return i plus j and i want to declare another method i want to define another method public int method name is subtraction here int i comma into j int i comma into j return next i want to use i minus j here so this is web service class so as we discussed in earlier uh, videos web services means it's a normal pozo class here it's a pozo now cal service is a pozo class here meaning what it doesn't implements or extends any third party interface or third party uh, vendor interface or implementation class here so even we are not using any third party classes also inside our class here it's a plain java class here so now we will convert this java class as a web services here so we know that uh, as per our web service architecture this service class should be within web application within web application this web application should be run on any server application server or web server here and inside this web application we need to configure the skeleton we need to configure the skeleton here so we know that when our client makes a request the request is comes to the server server will identify the skeleton so if server wants to identify your skeleton skeleton should be the servlet and we need to configure this servlet in web.xml file with some url pattern here so this skeleton we need to configure in web.xml file with some url pattern here so this skeleton based on the client request it will invokes the actual method on the service class and it will get the return value that return value will send to the client in the form of soap response here as we discussed in previous videos here soap response here so now here when we are developing web services let us assuming here we are not following we are not using any ide tool what are the steps we need to follow here just we need to create one web application inside the web application we need to create service class we need to compile this service class then we need to generate the visdel file we need to generate the visdel file so using visdel generation tool visdel generation tool and inside this web application we need to configure the skeleton here we need to configure the skeleton here so now when our client makes a request when our client makes a request client will send the client requested method details using soap request here soap request here so along with along with soap request along with the soap request 
he will send some other details but that details are not included into the soap request here in soap request can soap request we have only method name parameter values and parameter data types here so but here in addition to this it is also contain some url url that url will look like this http colon slash slash localhost 8080 slash web application name web application name i can say that app underscore name slash skeleton url pattern in web dot xml file we will configure this skeleton so the skeleton may be i am using some url pattern called services here services slash star here so here services is the url pattern of the skeleton and then you need to send the unique name for your service class here and you need to send the unique name for your service class let us see the service i am using something called cal service port or something like this so in addition to your soap request in addition to the soap request client will send this url so that based on this url based on this url it will service will hit the service here so this this url will received by this server here and then it will get the url pattern for your services and for that url pattern we are already configured the skeleton it will create the skeleton object here now the skeleton will identify the service class based on this cal service port meaning what somewhere somewhere we need to provide some unique name for this service class the unique name is assuming here cal service port here cal service port here let us say if you are providing unique name for your cal services abc client needs to send this abc here actually this url is available in the visual file also here this visual this url is also available in the visual file also here so from this visual file client will get this url here because once we generate this visual file we will share this visual file to the client here so client will get that visual file from the visual file he will get this url here this url is also called as in web service terminology endpoint url endpoint url of the web service here endpoint url of the web service here so in addition to the soap request client will send this client will send this endpoint url of the web services here so now here we need to provide some unique name to your service class here so whatever name you are provided here that name client needs to send it here so now how to map this how to provide this cal service port unique name to your cal service dot java we need to create one xml file called server hyphen server hyphen config dot wsdd file here wsdd file inside this we will map your service class with this unique name here with this unique name here so that when our client makes a request the request is comes to the skeleton now skeleton will take this unique name and it will read this configuration file so it will verify is there any service class is mapped with this unique name or not if it is mapped it will take that class it will create the object it will invokes the client requested method on that service class object here and it will provide the response back to the client here so now here what are the common things required to develop the web services using any implementation here here we are using access one implementation maybe you can use access two implementation or metro implementation but here some of the components are the common here some of the components some of the components common here so one is visual generation tool is a common here and this skeleton is a common here and this configuration file is also common here so these visual generation tool skeleton 
skeleton should be provided by the web service implementation provider here so if you are using access one implementation access one implementation provider should provide this visual generation tool and do skeleton here and this configuration file name is also name is also different from one implementation to the another implementation but the common but the commonly we will use this configuration file here so this configuration file is mandatory in any implementation if you develop the web service but this file name will be differ from one implementation to the another implementation here same way this visual generation tool is also is a class skeleton is also we know that it's a servlet here these class names also will be different will be differ from one implementation to the another implementation here so now i hope clear this point clear this configuration file about this configuration file this configuration file used by the skeleton to identify the service class to identify the service class here so after that after that now we are discussing about the access access one implementation so that what are the classes as given by the what is the class has given by the access one implementation for the visual generation tool what is the class has given by the access one implementation for skeleton we will discuss here so now here access one implementation has given one class called org dot apache dot access dot transport transport dot http dot sorry org dot apache dot access dot visual dot visual dot visual to not visual java to java to visual class they are given j is a capital w capital s capital d capital l capital here this class has given by the access one implementation and this class is acting as a visual generation tool here this visual generation tool will generates the visual file here so who will generate the visual file here is service provider will generates the visual file here why service provider needs to generate this visual file because visual file needs to share to the client so that client can understand about our service class here so now to generate this visual file using this visual generation tool we need to provide some inputs to this visual generation tool what are the inputs we need to provide it here is one is service class next one is we need to provide the endpoint url to the visual generation tool and we need to provide the name of the visual file which which visual file which name with which name we need to generate the visual file and the next one is the target name space in the visual file also the target name space of the visual file also we need to provide it here so based on that parameters visual generation tool will generate this visual file here so now what is the skeleton has given by the access one implementation here org dot apache dot access dot transport dot transport dot http dot class name is access servlet here it is a servlet here it is a servlet access servlet here a is a capital s is a capital so this class is acting as a access servlet so that we need to configure this access servlet in the web.xml file with some url pattern here so i hope clear all these points now so if you if you see this diagram we can easily develop the web services using access one implementation without eclipse i'm talking about without eclipse so let me remind all the steps what are the steps we need to follow to create access one web services using without using eclipse here so first we need to create a web application in the web in of classes folder you need to create your cal service dot java inside that we need to compile it then we need to generate this 
visitable file. After that, we need to create the web.xml file. In the web.xml file, we need to configure the skeleton with some URL pattern. And then finally, we will write this server-config.wsdd file here. To configure, after that, we need to configure, we need to download access one implementation jars. In that jar files only, we can find this classes here. So before generating the visitor file, we need to set the access one jar files into the class path. And then we need to copy access one jar files into our web application web by enough slash lib folder here. Why? Because this skeleton is given by the access one implementation. So this class file is required by the server to create the object for this skeleton. So how server will take this class? From the we were you from from your web application lib folder jar files on here. So that's the reason we need to copy the access one implementation jars into the lib folder also here. Now here, if we are if we are creating web application, I mean if we are creating this access one web services using Eclipse not required to manually follow all these steps here. Meaning what? Not required to generate this visible file. Not required to create this server iPhone config.wsdd file. Even not required to create this skeleton. Not required to configure the skeleton in the web.xml file. Even not required to download this access one jars and not required to copy that jar files into the web by enough lib folder here then what we need to do just you need to create one web application dynamic web project you need to create service class you need to follow some steps to convert cal service into the web service then automatically it will do all the steps here so what are the steps will do by the eclipse here one is it will generate the visible file it will configure the skeleton in the web.xml file with some URL pattern. And then it will create server iPhone config.wsd file in your web by enough in web by enough folder. And we know that this contains this contains the this XML file contains the mapping details between your service class with some unique name here. And the last one is it will copy the access one jar files into the web by enough lib folder here okay and then it will deploy the application also here so as a developer as a web service developer what you need to do if you are working with eclipse to create access one implementation first you need to create a dynamic web project create the service class that's it just we need to follow some steps to convert your cal service into the web services using access one implementation automatically it will follow all these steps here but eclipse also internally uses the this java to visual class to generate the visual file here and eclipse will configure the access alert in your web.xml file here but there you need to choose which implementation you are using you want to use access one implementation you want to use access to implementation or you want to use the apache cxf implementation first you need to decide first we need to decide then only eclipse will use the corresponding classes to generate the visual file and it will use the corresponding skeleton here so when we are converting your service class into the web services that time you need to choose which web service implementation you want to use then it will use the corresponding visual generation tool and the skeleton and the corresponding configuration file here.